Yeah. You can put it in slow motion on the end. Ready? I don't have a gavel, but okay. Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Thank you to those who are joining us in the audience and also those joining us via our district's YouTube channel. So let's start the meeting by saying a Pledge of Allegiance. The flag is over there to the left. Please remove your hat if you have one. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America. To the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Jessica, may I roll call of trustees, please? Trustee Bush? Here. Trustee Lee? Here. Trustee Lamarca? Blue Miss the World. Trustee Law? Here. President Chuck? Here. Trustee Spencer? Excuse. Trustee Young? Here. Six present, zero absent, one excused. Hey, we have a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any questions? Motion carried. Bring us to our uh, budget hearing presentation, Dr. Raby. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, budget hearing for the 22-23 budget development process. Uh, as we always begin our uh, budget development process, we always uh, take a look at the reductions that we have made since the Great Recession, so back in 2010-11. And since then, uh, in including this budget, uh, we have reduced our proposed budgets uh, to the total of a little over $10 million. And one of, the, um, one of the items that we take a look at when we're uh, looking at through our budget development process is our enrollment. And during this period of time when we've been able to uh, leverage the enrollment decline, um, our enrollment uh, has um, flattened out and actually uh, bumped up in the last uh, couple of years and we're projected to have uh, approximately 1,800 students for the fall of uh, uh, September of uh, 2022. The uh, first items that we take a look at when we uh, begin the, the process as well are the major budget increases. Uh, the first uh, row there uh, of numbers, uh, the first two rows are actually are related to retirement systems. The first one, apologize for the label not being there, is the teacher retirement system, the TRS. Um, that's an increase of $132,000 uh, or 7.78%. ERS, which is our non-instructional fo folks, the employee's retirement system, is uh, only scheduled to uh, go up uh, uh, $5,717 or 0.6%. Our health insurance has been ver verified back in February. You know, uh, we have a little bit of a bump this year, uh, more than we've had for the last probably five or six years, 4.45%. Uh, the majority of this cost increase uh, is due, due to the uh, COVID um, response. Negotiated salaries is up 4.87%. These are all of our contractual obligations for a little over a million dollars. Our total increase in our major cost drivers is $1.4 million or 4.83%. We take a look at our advocacy uh, landscape for the 22-23 uh, sustainability agenda uh, uh, process this year. We looked at really five things and we continue to look at these five things, state aid, tax cap, mandate relief, fund balance, and capital outlay projects. Uh, we were, um, have been successful with state aid over the last couple of years and the governor reaffirmed her commitment to fully fund uh, foundation aid by 23-24 in her state of the state address this past um, January uh, with proposing the highest ever investment here in state education of $31 billion. Around the tax cap, we continually asked to amend the formula to support multi-year planning, uh, thus allowing for more exemptions. Uh, we take a look, we always have the uh, advocate for the legislature to take a look at mandate relief uh, to maximize our resources to benefit our students. Uh, fund balance, the legislature, we ask to increase the unrestricted fund balance limit for school districts from 4 to 8% to allow us to save um, uh, towards uh, catastrophic events such as a Great Recession um, from 4 to 8%. Uh, municipalities, uh, by way of mention, have no limit on their uh, unrestricted fund balance limit. Capital outlay projects, this did move quite a bit uh, in both the Assembly and Senate this year. I uh, just wasn't able to get it across the line to the governor's desk to sign. Um, but we, we are asking for an increase in the limit to, to a minimum of 250000 
adjusted by the building aid regional cost factor up to a maximum of 500,000. Right now, it's limited to $100,000, which um, I have it, uh, in uh, upcoming slides. Looking at our major uh, funding mechanisms of state aid, tax levy, our fund balance and reserves uh, collectively, uh, New York state aid uh, was a increase of a little over a million dollars at 5.14%. Our tax levy scheduled to increase by 2.17%, which is our cap limit, uh, a little over $412,000. We're going to use, uh, utilize uh, $276,552 for our fund balance, more than last year, or this current budget year, in an increase of 6.91%. Utilization of reserves is an increase of uh, a little over $400,000 from this current year, or 56.24%. We have a total increase in these funding mechanisms of uh, almost $2.2 million, or 4.85%. Looking uh, specifically at our tax levy, the law reads allowable levy growth factor equals the lesser of 2% or the inflationary change uh, using the CPI. The CPI was set at 4.7%. Uh, therefore, the base is 2% before exemptions. So we start off by taking a look at the 21-22 tax levy, the current year of $19,036,522. We multiply that by a tax base growth factor. Uh, which is given to us by the Office of Real Property Tax Services. And that's where we take a look at, or they take a look at, new bricks and mortar within the school district boundaries. And that growth amount uh, in increased uh, by a little over $53,000. We then take a look at our 21-22, our current year pilots. We add that amount in. Uh, those are payments in lieu of taxes. We have six of them. And that's uh, an increase of $182,557. We then back out any capital expense within the local budget, um, and that was $165,288, and that uh, mostly uh, was due to the capital improvement project through BOCES. Uh, and then we have an adjusted current year levy of $19,107,093. We then apply our levy growth factor of that 2%, remember that CPI or 2%, whichever is the lesser of the two, uh, and then we uh, back out our projected estimated pilots for 2223, uh, and that's $115,714. And again, projected six properties. We had eligible carryover from the previous year of $75,896. So the levy before any adjustments or exemptions are considered is $19,449,417, uh, or an increase of 2.17%. Uh, 412,895 dollars. $412, so taking a look at the exemptions page, uh, you'll see that no exemptions qualify. So therefore, our levy will be uh, set at 217,000 for an increase of 417 percent, 2 points of 17 percent, 412,895 dollars. Uh, reasons not to go over the tax levy cap. Uh, Climate to go over above the cap proves to be high risk, with very few districts being successful in going over the tax levy cap. Uh, Diffuse combined wealth ratio uh, is approximately 0.645, 5, which is the seventh lowest out of the 23 Erie County school districts. And our three year average for free and reduced lunch percentage for kindergarten through sixth grade is approximately 46%, which is ranked sixth highest uh, in Erie County. Now taking a look at another uh, funding um, uh, stream, which is our reserves. Uh, we'll be using our Employee Benefit Accrued Liability Reserve this year. This is for uh, the compensation for any retirements. So this is $564,410 that we'll utilize there. Our ERS Reserve, which is the state retirement for non-instructional, is $300,000. Our TRS, our Teachers uh, State Retirement Reserve, is for $250,000. Our capital reserve for vehicles and equipment, um, this is for our school buses, which uh, I'll get to uh, momentarily, is uh, $596,768 uh, for a total use of our uh, re uh, restricted reserves of a little over $1.7 million. This is uh, the use of reserves over time graphically, and you can see some spikes. Uh, 2019, uh, 2021, these are points in time when our capital reserve reaches its maximum amount uh, right prior to us utilizing that reserve for capital projects. And 
as the, uh, uh, the board knows, uh, we are uh, in the process of um, uh, enacting the capital project after the voters approve that back uh, in December. We uh, once again utilized Thought Exchange to get some feedback from our school community, asking what are your most important priorities when considering the 22-23 budget plan of the school district. We did have 150 participants this year with 69 thoughts and almost 2,500 ratings. Um, the makeup, uh, as far as roles go uh, from the participants, we had 46% uh, parent and guardians, 8% students, 4% community members, 42% staff members. 48% were from uh, Cuga Heights Elementary, which is our largest building, 18% from the middle school, and 34% from the high school. The top uh, three key thoughts were providing extra support for struggling students, maintaining programs for students, and the support for our students. And I think all three of those thoughts uh, have been realized uh, in this budget uh, as we preserve all of our programming and are planning to add more. Specifically, um, we are taking over uh, our pre, uh, universal uh, pre-kindergarten program. Um, that will be uh, an, an additional $110,000, $110,053 out of our own budget. Um, you'll notice that um, we do get $184,447 from, we were getting from um, state aid. Uh, this year, um, we, were, we were increased, our district was increased to $459,000. $138. However, um, that is um, targeted for full day pre-K, so I would um, imagine that the board will uh, investigate doing full day pre-K next year where you can have three full day sessions and service more students at a, at a greater impact. Uh, through through uh, attrition, we're, uh, we're going to continue our plan, replace our classroom monitors with teaching assistants. Uh, we'll be able to increase that by three FTEs. Of increase of $30,208, increase in high school equipment to replace cafeteria tables of $15,500, middle school equipment continually to replace um, classroom sets of desks and chairs, increase of $11,680, uh, transportation upgrades, this is software uh, for GPS capability in all of our school buses for an increase of $86,000, and then in athletics, an increase of $23,000. Uh, provide strength and conditioning uh, coaching for our student athletes, which will allow for significant reduction in athletic injuries. So our increase in our budget request, our amount for budget request was $276,878, uh, which totaled seven FTEs with those uh, increases. So taking a look at our initial draft budget of $50,223,768, our draft revenues was $49,574,634. So we had a shortfall initially of $649,134. When we take a look at our budget, and we, in our initial budget, and we realize that we have a shortfall, we, we have some rationale for potential reductions. We always want to protect programming for students, as evidenced in our thought exchange, protect reasonable class size, and at the same time adhere to contractual limits, maximize district resources and efficiencies, review and evaluate needs versus wants, review and evaluate budgeting and spending three-year trends. To fill the gap, we identify the amount of proposed and final state aid along with any federal stimulus, then reduce the amount of new budget requests in reverse prioritized order, then if needed, implement further budget reductions within the current budget in a prioritized order, or we reduce a combination of both lists, and then if we ever receive more state aid after the state finalizes their budget, we uh, replace any reductions request request in that prioritized order for use of use less fund balance, which is what we did this year. We used less fund balance. Um, so the reductions that we did make uh, mostly were in the current budget. So various salary and benefit reductions and retirement breakage were able to reduce three hundred nineteen thousand six hundred ninety four dollars. Special education out of district uh, placement and that was based on C uh, the committee of special education uh, recommendations for a decrease of $43,114. District-wide equipment, $36,326. And those are really uh, in relation to the upcoming um, capital project. We felt we could reduce those and, and get those in the capital project down the road. Adjustments in workman's comp and unemployment insurance. Again, just an uh, underutilization of, of um, that budget line item of $150,000. Same with a 
adjustments to substitute teaching of $100,000 if we have been uh, covering uh, those uh, needs internally more and more. For a total of $649,134. And therefore, we're able to fill the gap, and our final budget is $49,741,002. On to the vehicle reserve, uh, the voters approved a vehicle reserve back in 2009, and again, 2016, we use excess funds to fund this reserve, and the reserve allows the district to make bus or equipment purchases that do not affect the amount of the current budget proposal or tax levy. And we also receive state aid for uh, bus purchases in the subsequent year years, and this aid continues to support the bus replacement program. So our bus purchasing since 2017 uh, is uh, graphically displayed here. You can see in 22-23, uh, we're looking at purchasing $596,768 worth of buses. We'll receive aid of $619,445. So we'll actually make money of uh, $22,677 because the state pays us back uh, in, in interest in using our own funding. You can see since 2017-18, our interest received uh, will total uh, uh, $107,578. So our bus purchases specifically for this year, uh, three 66 passenger buses with Wi-Fi, also with luggage compartments for sports equipment, one 29 passenger bus with wheel, uh, wheelchair lift and Wi-Fi, one 30 passenger bus with Wi-Fi, and we'll also surplus uh, five vehicles that have a combined mileage of 366,249 miles. Onto the capital outlay, again, these are this is an opportunity that we can uh, fund capital outlay projects within our, our budget. Uh, there are small projects, uh, about $100,000, um, that we can do throughout the district where we see any uh, uh, safety issues or small projects that we can um, uh, take care of on an annual basis versus um, folding them into a, capital, a major capital project. And when we do this, we still get aid, 80% uh, aid on these projects, so you can see over a 10 year period of time, you can do a total of a million dollars worth of work for a total cost of only $280,000. And this year, for next year, uh, we are planning to replace as many interior doors at Cuyahoga Heights as possible. Uh, look, taking specifically a look at our expenditures in this budget, administration and general support is down $58,482. Instructional is up. Uh, a little over $1.7 million. Transportation is up uh, a little over $231,000. Benefits is up $641,679. Debt service is down $68,900. The total general fund budget is up uh, $2,473,228. Vehicle per reserve purchases is down from the previous year, $77,992 for a total increase with um, vehicles is uh, $2,395,236. Looking at that graphically, 55% is within the instructional program, 10% administration and general support, 5% transportation, 22% benefits, 8% debt service and obligations. Looking at the revenue side, our state aid, as mentioned previously, went up a little over a million dollars. Sales tax and other charges is up uh, a little over $300,000. Appropriated fund balance use is up $276,552. Use of our reserves is up $401,130. Miscellaneous revenue is down $9,022. Our tax levy increase, as mentioned previously, is up $412,895 for a total general fund budget increase of uh, $2,473,228. Looking at our revenue graphically, 45% uh, comes from state aid, 39% property tax, 2% use of our reserves, 9% appropriated fund balance, 1% miscellaneous review, and 4% sales tax and other charges. Looking at the three-part budget, which is uh, a legal representation of what we have to present to our voters, 0.24% comes from our administration, 7.24% 7 is program increase, uh, capital is down 1.35% for a total budget increase of 5.23%. Taking a look at estimated tax rate, uh, considering no change in assessment, 
Uh, full value, there's an increase of two point, or I'm sorry, uh, full value is a decrease of 2.22%. Uh, Chittawaga is currently at 100% valuation, so their tax rate set at $16.53 per thousand. That's a decrease of 37 cents for that 2.22%. Uh, Lancaster is currently at an 87% uh, percent valuation rate, so their uh, uh, rate is $19 per thousand or an increase of $2.10 per thousand or a 12.4% uh, increase. And that's current right now, that may jump up before the board stops those tax rates in, in August. So what influences the tax, uh, the tax rate, the tax levy, and the tax bill? So first take a look at expenditures, which we have some uh, or little control over. Uh, the expenditures are down, the levy rate bill can come down. The expenditures are up, the levy rate and bill have to go up to fund those expenditures. If revenues are up, uh, let's say state aid bumps up, then we can bring our levy rate uh, and, and tax bill down. Uh, if revenues are down and we have to make up the difference to uh, cover our expenditures, the levy rate and bill have to go up to compensate for that. If assessments are up, um, for instance, taking a look at the difference between uh, Chitawa and Lancaster right now, there's really no impact on the levy itself. If you, if you uh, have to raise $14 million, you still have to raise that $14 million. But the rate in the bill can come down because there's more value to spread amongst all the taxpayers and individuals uh, have, would have to pay less. If assessments are down, again, no impact on the levy, on the actual dollars, but the rate in the bill would go up because there is uh, less value to spread around and uh, individual taxpayers have to absorb more of that cost. Taking a look at a $100,000 assessed value home um, in Chikawaga, uh, they are 100% uh, uh, rated. Uh, so right now their tax bill for a $100,000 value home would be $1,653.90, uh, reduction of $37.45. In Lancaster, if it stays at 87%, uh, the value is set at $114,943 for a $100,000 home. Therefore, their bill would be uh, $2,184.03 for an increase of $493.48. Taking a look at our budget here, history over 22 years, our, our average tax levy increase is 2.05% and our average budget increase is 2.6%. Looking at our propositions, Proposition 1 is our proposed budget, $49,741,002, an increase of 5.23%. Uh, dollar increase is $2,473,228. The levy would be set at $19,449,417 for an increase of $412,895 or 2.17%. On proposition number two on the vehicle side, um, the fund would be utilized for $596,768. Three 66 passenger buses, one twenty. Nine passenger bus with a wheelchair lift and one 30 passenger bus, all with Wi Fi capability. Taking a look at a contingency budget, if our uh, budget was defeated, um, we cannot raise the tax levy uh, at all from this current year. Uh, therefore, the budget would be set at $49,328,108, or uh, budget to budget increase of 4.23% uh, in the uh, the dollar amount increase would uh, be $2,060,334. We would have to re, uh, take out uh, from the proposed budget the non-union salary increases of $26,370. Training and equipment, except state-aided hardware uh, and health and wellness equipment, would have to be taken out of $286,525. And then the capital outlay uh, project would also come out of the budget. So, so a total reduction of $412,895, which would be the tax levy increase. And under a contingency budget, uh, there would be no community use of our facilities without full reimbursement of those expenses. The other decision to, um, our school community needs to make are the three uh, Board of Education seats up for election, each for three-year terms. Uh, we have no competition this year. We have three seats up. Um, incumbent Patrick Law, 1A. Incumbent Todd Bush, 2A. Newcomer 3A Bartholomew McGloin. Our budget vote is set for Tuesday, May 17th, 2022, from noon to 9 p.m. in the high school gymnasium. 
You must be a citizen of the United States, you must be 18 years of age, and you must be a resident of the school district for a period of 30 days immediately prior to the vote. Any questions? Kids, any questions? Of an era. Yeah. Aren't you going to miss this? Tear in the eye. Tear in the eye. I know. Pat's going to miss it. I just put my finger in my Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stay in ovation for the eye last month? No, I'm good. some last time. All right. Good question? No. All right. May I have a motion to enter now into executive session to discuss the appointment history of a particular individual with no action to follow? So long. Second.
Okay, thank you everybody. We are coming entering the we just exited executive session. And now I'll make a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. So second. Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you everybody for attending.